Michael Phelps was only seven years old when his mother told him to go swimming. He had no idea that doing so would change his whole life. What started out as a way for Michael to let off steam turned into something he couldn't live without. Michael Phelps became the goat of swimming because he was brave and worked hard. Michael Phelps, who is known for being honest and having strong opinions, spoke out against his idol and tennis legend Novak Djokovic. In an interview with CNN, Phelps said something that was different from what Djokovic has done. Kicking us off, Michael took a stand against Novak Djokovic. In a CNN interview, the Baltimore Bullet was asked about his thoughts on the Djokovic hullabaloo that's going on right now. During the time of COVID, the Australian Open requires people to get shots. Djokovic was sent away because he had refused to be vaccinated. Later, the fact that tennis star Djokovic had not been vaccinated became known to the public. Phelps, who had been ravaged by COVID, didn't think much of his idol stance. The gold medalist said about his experience, the first time I had COVID, it was awful. For 36 hours, I thought I was going to die. Phelps says, I think as athletes, we are role models when he talks about responsibilities. We all need to be on the same page, Phelps said. The swimming star says that unity is the strongest weapon and that if we are going to go through this together, we can get through anything. Michael Phelps also gives his mental health a lot of thought. Phelps is one of the few athletes who talks about how important it is to take care of your mental health. When Simone Biles, the best gymnast ever, pulled out of the Tokyo Olympics, Phelps came out to support her. Not only does he support his teammates and other athletes, Phelps also teaches his young children how important it is to take care of their minds. He shows them how important it is to ask for help. Even though Phelps had his share of problems, nothing could stop him. Phelps loves spending time with his family now that he's officially retired. Michael Phelps is one of the people who will be going into the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Hall of Fame. Lindsey Vaughn, Michelle Kwan, Mia Hamm, Billie Jean King, and the late Pat Summit are some of the nine women who will join Michael Phelps and Roger Kingdom in the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Hall of Fame this summer. Natalie Coughlin, swimming, Muffy Davis, para-alpine skiing and cycling, David Kiley, para-alpine skiing, track and field, and wheelchair basketball, Trisha Zorn Hudson, para-swimming, and Gretchen Fraser, swimming, were also voted into the 2022 class. The 1976 Women's 4x100 Freestyle Relay Swimming Team, which shocked the East Germans and was led by Shirley Babashoff, and the 2002 Men's Paralympic Sled Hockey Team were also voted into the Hall of Fame by a mix of Olympic and Paralympic athletes, media, officials, and fans. The ceremony will take place at the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Museum. Since 2019, there hasn't been a Hall class. Before that, there hadn't been one since 2012. Because of the gaps, there is a long list of good candidates. This year, Bode Miller, Julia Mancuso, Don Staley, and John Smith, who have won two Olympic gold medals in wrestling, did not make the cut. This year's class has won a total of 129 medals, 86 of which are gold. This is led by Phelps, who has won a record-setting 28 medals and 23 gold medals. Novak Djokovic, Phelps's idol, had to pull out of the U.S. Open because he didn't get a shot and can't travel to the U.S. Novak Djokovic, a 21-time major champion and former world number one, has pulled out of the U.S. Open because he isn't vaccinated against COVID-19. This means that he can't travel to the U.S. Djokovic tweeted on Thursday morning, just before the draw was to be made public, sadly, I will not be able to travel to New York this time for U.S. Open. He wished his fellow players luck and said that he would stay in good shape and a good mood and wait for another chance to play. He seemed to be training for the tournament. He put up a video of himself practicing on a hard court on Instagram on July 30th, but Djokovic had to drop out of the Western and Southern Open last week because he was still not allowed in. He also had to drop out of the National Bank Open earlier this month because of similar rules in Canada. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's advice on international travel was updated on Wednesday to say non-U.S. citizens and non-U.S immigrants, you must show proof of being fully vaccinated with the primary series of an accepted COVID-19 vaccine before you board your flight to the United States. There are only a few exceptions. The U.S. Open tournament director, Stacey Allister, said in a statement, Novak is a great champion, and it's a shame that he won't be able to play at the 2022 U.S. Open because he can't get into the country because of the federal government's vaccination policy for non-U.S. citizens. We hope Novak will come back to the U.S. Open 
in 2023. Djokovic has had a tough year, but he has still won three major titles. After getting a medical exemption to play in the Australian Open in January and arriving in the country, he got involved in an international legal battle that led to his visa being revoked and him being kicked out of the country before the tournament even started. He couldn't defend his title, and he later made it clear that he was willing to skip tournaments where he would have to get a shot to play or enter the country. Djokovic is likely to play his next match for Serbia in the Davis Cup or for Europe in the Laver Cup. At neither event do you get points for your ranking. On his website, there are no tournaments on his schedule right now. Djokovic's spot in the draw will be taken by a lucky loser from qualifying. Also, Ahmad Nassar is named executive director of Novak Djokovic's Players Association. Novak Djokovic and Vasek Pospisil started a tennis players association two years ago. They chose Ahmad Nassar, the former president of NFL Players Inc., to be its executive director and the CEO of a new for profit affiliate that will create business opportunities off the court. The changes were announced at a meeting of the Professional Tennis Players Association, PTPA, on Thursday night, a week before the start of the U.S. Open. Winners Alliance, the affiliate, will try to get licenses for video games, trading cards, and other collectibles. The PTPA also said it will start a program to help players get discounts on travel, access to financial planners, and help with discipline appeals, among other things. The group said that it had raised $26 million. Nasser also worked at NFL Players Inc., which is the marketing and licensing arm of the NFL Player Association. He was also the founder and CEO of One Team Partners, which helped athletes from different sports with their business interests. By the beginning of next season, the PTPA plans to have a board made up of both male and female players who were chosen by the players. Djokovic has won 21 Grand Slam titles, but he couldn't go to New York and won't play in the last Grand Slam tournament of the year because he isn't protected against COVID-19. Last, it's the end of an era. Serena Williams is expected to play in her last tournament at the U.S. Open. She has had one of the best tennis careers ever. The 40-year-old won her first of 23 major singles titles at this tournament in 1999. Now, 23 years after her first Grand Slam win, it will be the end of her career. In a first-person essay for Vogue, Williams wrote about the different feelings she's had about her choice and how she hoped to have another child soon. Williams wrote about her upcoming retirement, There is no happiness in this topic for me. I know it's not what most people say, but I'm in a lot of pain. I can't think of anything harder than this. I dislike it. I hate having to be in this situation. I keep telling myself that I wish it were easy, but it's not. I'm conflicted. I don't want it to end, but I'm also ready for what comes next. Williams hasn't won a match since her announcement, which she made before her second round match at the Canadian Open. In Toronto, she lost to Belinda Bencic. In Cincinnati, she lost to Raducanu in her first match. Still, she got standing ovations at both events, and the day her Vogue piece came out online, ticket sales for the U.S. Open went through the roof. Even though it's still not clear how Williams, a six-time U.S. Open winner, will do against Donka Kovnik in the first round in New York, it seems likely that there won't be a single empty seat at Arthur Ashe Stadium for that match, or any others she plays in. Williams hasn't tried to hide the fact that she wants to tie Margaret Court's long-standing record of 24 major titles, but she hasn't been able to since she gave birth in 2018. According to Caesar's Sportbook, she has 25-1 to 1 odds to win the tournament. This doesn't make her the favorite, but Serena Williams is the only one who could pull off a miracle ending. Unfortunately, that's all the time we had for today. For more sporting news, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Till next time, cheers!